I am Pastor Valerie from Montrose United Methodist Church. And I'm Pastor Seth with Hartford United Methodist Church. Welcome back to our ongoing Advent edition of Wisdom Wednesday. The last few weeks we've been looking at some of the traditional themes of Advent as we've been lighting our Advent wreath here in our home and today we get to explore the theme of joy. It might be my personal favorite. I don't know about you, if you have a favorite theme. I hadn't really thought about that. Yeah, well, joy's my favorite. But as we get started, we're going to also get the opportunity to make some joyful noise. And we're going to start with our first song, Joy to the World, Unspeakable Joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the journey together we invite you to take any candles you have at home if you'd want to light advent candles with us it could be any four candles or maybe you have your own advent wreath we're going to light three candles tonight for uh, hope peace and joy so let us pray before we do that dear God in the height of our advent walk grant us the courage to experience joy joy in the face of apathy joy in the face of sorrow Joy in the face of uncertainty. Amen. Now our scripture tonight, uh, we're going to read Psalm 126. And then we read that when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. And so today we're, we're talking about joy. 
and it's a key theme throughout a lot of the Bible. It comes up a lot throughout Scripture, and it even references quite a few things that might bring us joy. Things like a good harvest, or tending a good flock of sheep. Um, it talks about a good friendship might raise that emotion of joy within us. Uh, weddings, new children, like so many experiences that may spark joy. And so I thought we'd take sort of a page from Marie Kondo and share a few things that might spark some joy in our lives. Uh, for me, especially this time of year, that is a lot of the Muppet Christmas Carol. I find so much joy in the Muppet Christmas Carol. I watch it every year. It's a family tradition. And it, I don't know why exactly. Maybe it's just because it taps into sort of this childhood part of myself that I just, it brings me joy. I don't know. And along those lines, uh, Star Wars also brings me lots of joy. Grew up watching Star Wars. Absolutely love it. Been getting really excited about some of the things coming out in The Mandalorian and the like. That brought me so much joy on Friday with a particular scene that I don't want to get into any spoilers, but Valerie knows all about it because she saw my whole face light up. And now I'm wondering if whether a Muppet Star Wars would just be like the ultimate joy in my life. I have no idea. But what about you, Valerie? What brings you joy? Well, when you were talking, I was thinking a lot about nostalgia. And the things that bring us joy are maybe tied to like previous memories or previous experiences or times in our lives when our joy was like natural. Like when we were kids, we were just kind of naturally joyous. We didn't have a lot of worries or cares in life. So when we experience fun things like the Christmas Carol and we experience them as adults, we feel that like maybe sense of joy or, or it takes us back to that time uh, when we were young, when we felt like good about things. But, and I'm also noticing we have a Star Wars um, ornament right here. <laughs> but the things that bring me joy, when Seth asked me earlier today to start thinking about these things, I think certain experiences bring me joy. Things like um, snuggling with my cat, or um, eating something really delicious, something that is like unlike your usual food, or maybe also brings me a sense of nostalgia. Um, camp brings me joy. Mm. Campfires bring me joy. See, so, yeah, I'm thinking about memories. I think really fond memories bring me joy. Nice. So there's all kinds of things that might bring us some joy, and. Feel free to share in the comments anything that might spark joy in your life so that we can celebrate that together. But joy, is, it's a great emotion. Uh, it's a wonderful gift that God has shared with us. And it's a gift that we really need because a lot of times life isn't that joyful. No, it's not. Especially during this season of life when we've been journeying through this pandemic and everything on top of that together. Yeah, our, our world is kind of all, all sorts of different broken right now. Um, and the psalm we read earlier kind of touches on this reality. I mean, there's, there's nothing really new about this reality. It's definitely brought to light a lot more right now. But, I mean, the psalm referenced you know, sowing seeds of tears and then in the hopes that it would be a harvest of joy. It's a, it's a weird image that I just really have always loved as much as one can love the idea of sowing tears. But the psalm references looking at what God has done before, kind of hearkening to that, that memory side that you were just talking about, hoping for that, that same good fortune, that same joy for some time yet in the, for, in the future. And I think that's where the biblical understanding of joy really starts to stand out. Because Christian joy isn't just, it's not just happiness or contentment, it's something a little bit more. It's, it's more of a choice that in spite of our circumstances, we can still have joy. We can choose joy because we have hope and faith in God. And I think that's part of the understanding that led the psalmist to write about rejoicing, even when all he may have had was tears. And then later, even into the New Testament, you get the Apostle Paul and other Christians who are arrested. They're being beaten and persecuted every which way, but they choose joy, even welcoming all these trials and struggles with joy. Yeah, I guess when I think of joy, I don't always think of it as a choice. You don't always think of like choosing joy. So like when I eat something delicious or when I cuddle with my cat, I just, I feel joyful. It's not like I actively say, oh, I want to feel joy. It's almost like you're implying that when we choose joy or we can choose joy um, or we should choose joy over negative feelings and that no matter what, we should choose joy 
And I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, a weird concept to try to wrap our heads around. But the idea of being able to choose joy. I'm going to choose to hold our cat. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't get into our presence. Yeah. But the idea of choosing joy, I mean, it is tricky to have wrap our heads around. And, and Paul also kind of thought of it as thought of joy as this gift, a gift of God's Spirit, as, as sort of a sign of Jesus' presence with us that inspired hope in the midst of all this hardship. And if we believe that Jesus was able to conquer sin and death and through his resurrection, then well, choosing or otherwise experiencing the gift of joy in the midst of whatever our hardships might be, it doesn't seem quite so strange. But that doesn't mean we should ignore our sorrow or pain, right? Yeah, no, that... That would be unhealthy. Um, and for a lot of people, this holiday season, any holiday season, is going to bring up some painful memories and emotions because there are, there are loved ones that aren't around anymore for whatever reason that might be. Whether it's because of physical distancing with pandemics, they're not surrounded by the family they're used to, or other circumstances. It, that's where the, the choice of joy almost comes back into focus because it's not just turning the frown upside down. It's a decision of hope and faith in Jesus' power in our lives. Anything else you'd like to, to share on that? I'm so distracted by our cat. I'm yeah, sorry. our cat is bringing us so much joy because she's pawing herself around the presents. She wants to open the presents. That would maybe bring her joy. Yeah. yeah. Well, friends, as we wrap up this time together, we do have one more song we'd like to share with you as we make that joyful noise. Uh, and it's a song that touches on how the joy of the Lord is our strength, even in the midst of our sorrows, in the midst of you know the darkness, all these other things that might be trying to raise up so much darkness in our lives. We can still turn to the light of joy, and holy smokes, is that candle bright? Yeah, I don't know if you can see it there, me. but that is really high. <laughs> Yikes! But that is just a sign of how much it is. It is vital for us to appreciate joy in the midst of this season in particular. So, let's join together as we sing the joy of the Lord. Though the tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will
closing prayer together. Holy and gracious God, we're so thankful for this time to be together to talk about all the ways in which you manifest yourself to us and through us. May we experience the true joy that is your love and your hope and your peace this season. And may we uh, really live into this joy and share this joy. Let us choose joy. Help us to make the right choice in that. It's in your name we pray. Amen.